the frames, the wheels, uh, the guards, all have to be marked so that there can be no swapping of equipment, no replacement of equipment. They can replace tyres or whatever, but the riders have to do it themselves. You'll see uh, bits and pieces of that as we progress through the event. Well over 200 entrants here. And a complete mixture of conditions. Here they're waiting to pick up their starting time. When they get their starting time, they go off against the clock. Each of the running stages between the special stages are timed, but they mustn't go too fast and they mustn't go too slow. And they clock in and clock out and have their cards, cards punched. And then there, there are the timed stages as well. You'll see bits and pieces of that as we continue. Some of the names to keep your eyes open for. The first round was won by the Italian Giorgio Grasso, number 109. You'll see him uh, a little later on. And we see some of them uh, making their way off there. We've got uh, a couple of Brits in here. And the main one we're keeping an eye on is Paul Edmondson, who's been going well. Of course, he was the 1990 125 CC world champion anyway. There he is, look on the right-hand side, along with Angelo Signorelli, the Italian. And as they set off, they make their way. They look the cleanest they're going to be for the next couple of days, I can tell you. Bikes and riders will very soon get a bit dirty. Jeff Nielsen, you can see he, was the, he took over from Paul Edmondson in 1991. One of the Dutch champions, of course, entries here from everywhere, really. Czechoslovakia, Italy, the UK. There's uh, Humink. He's another Dutch champion, 500cc. Worth keeping an eye open for him as well. Came third in the World Championship last year. Good weather, a little bit of wind. Uh, the wet, though, is very wet, as you'll see later on. There's uh, quite a lot of mud around. And it's intentional, of course. And for those of you at home who, who don't really know what enduro is, I mean, it's endurance. There are quite a few Husqvarna's in here. The four strokes you'll hear going past the uh, the microphone. And you see there's Lenslink getting one of his stage cards clipped. And the police holding the traffic up, although there's not very much traffic here, to be frank with you. This part of... Poland is, uh, oh, there goes one of the support vehicles with provisions, off to a provisioning stop. This part of uh, Poland, the Kielce region, very well known for its uh, building materials industry. It's got quarries and stone quarries. Uh, Jan van Oshot is, uh, everyone's looking for him to go very well as well. And of course, the Dutch riders love sand they really do and here's a good camera shot and a lot of these stages of the motocross stages here are sand so we should be seeing the Dutch riders coming through well and uh, there's pretty much everything here for the riders because there's the full stroke going through you can hear and some of the youngsters so through the water and you hear that four stroke going through again and lots of different ways of getting through the water as well you either go hammering through or you slow right down and take it easy a little bit of help coming from one of the marshals here so if we look at uh, some of those top names 125 cc stefano pazzeri luca trussardi the two Italians are very strong, one on an Aprilia and one on a Kawasaki. And uh, there we see one of the 350 Husqvarna's losing his rider there. And uh, one of the new, new boys with his numbers up in the 200s. John Deacon is on 212. I thought that was him for a minute. He's one of the British riders.
and here you can see the crowd standing. You can always guarantee a crowd will gather wherever there's the likelihood of seeing somebody come to grief. And uh, in a minute, you'll see what I mean. Here we are, big water splash. And loads of kids here cheering them on. And the riders, um, some of them going flat out. Now, that's a good indication. You see the headlights on there. I, I meant to tell you about the bikes. Enduro bikes are pretty much motocross bikes, really. But um, because they have to take to the roads and they're supposed to be as close to standard production models as possible, they all have um, road plates. They have to be uh, homologated into, like, standard bike classes. They have headlights and license plates and the whole number. They have slightly different exhausts because they have to perform antics like that. But uh, it's him just giving them a, a little wheelie as he comes out of the water and goes through the countryside. Lovely countryside. And the weather here can be absolutely abysmal. So everyone was very pleased that the weather was as good as it was for this event. Very difficult on an event this spread out to um, give you a good idea but you do get there you see they're on ordinary main road and they can open the throttle sit down and relax a bit and get a few miles under their belts and really go for it as far as the 500 uh, cc's are concerned the italians are strong but with kimink we've seen uh there's podmol Czechoslovak, he's going quite well. The Italian Tullio Pellegrinelli eh, is on a Honda, he's going well. So you've got Kawasaki Honda KTM and Kai Armin Fefeli, I think that's how you pronounce it, is uh, the German rider who's going well as well. Now he's waiting a little while before he goes through the time control because he's got a little bit of time in hand. So. Uh, you mustn't be late, you mustn't be early. You get a point added to your score for every second that you get it wrong either way of the time. And of course, the person with the smallest number of points wins the event overall, so the judge is very helpful. Really making it as easy as they possibly can for everybody. Standing by now to do one of the special stages on his 350cc. This is one of the motocross stages, as you can see, and we were saying that very sandy. It's one of the Swedish bikes, of course. And the Dutchmen love the sand, so they open the throttle and really go for it because they feel at home here. This special um, motocross stage is three kilometers in length. You can see how tired the guys get by the end of the day. They'll have done seven, eight hours in the saddle, and uh, that's why it's called endurance. 30, 40 Ks in between the special stages. Well, these particular two we've got it. Here's Himmink going for it. And Himmink pretty fast through the sand. Well marked out. Well, this part of the event is well marked out by the white and yellow tape. And quite easy for the guys to make their way around it. He's going really fast and hoping to pick up some spare time here. He came sixth and seventh in Hungary and was determined to do well here. But Jan van Olsson is um, really showing him a clean pair of heels. And he's one of the fastest uh, in the sand. The uh, Lighter machines, of course, going better in the sand. 500 cc's is Himmings. And uh, also, of course, on 250 cc's. Here's Giorgio Grasso, who won in Hungary on his Kawasaki. We'll take a short break and see more of that uh, later in the show. back in Kielce for the second round world championship enduro and this is where the problem started 
the riders here have to get uh, eight world championship events under their belt before they go down to Australia at the end of the season to involve themselves uh, in the sort of big final. And, uh, there's a couple of the younger guys having a crack through there. So it's important that, uh, for example, Hungary are now here. They, they clock up before uh, they can go down because the big team event as well down in Australia at the end of the season. Now you can see all the uh, technology here being very well sorted out. Uh, on, an, on a long event like this, spread out all over the place, uh, you need so many people, marshals and helpers and police. And you can hear the four strokes uh, moving on there. We've got, of course, Husqvarna's, as I said, Gas Gas, Moto TM's, all sorts of uh, stuff here, apart from the usual Kawasaki, Suzuki, KTM's that uh, you would be aware of. And uh, some of the British riders, as I said, Paul Edmondson rides uh, Husqvarna. And uh, the Italians, of course, riding Italian bikes, if they can, possibly. And they're the uh, Husabags. And uh, time for a bit of a rest. And you can see the state the bikes get into. This is uh, Eric Verhoof on his Hooserberg. He's uh, one of the Dutch riders. And 213 is the German rider Stefan Berhardt there, also on a Hooserberg. And waiting for the time control. And they get clocked in. And off they go. By the end of this event, I tell you, they know they've uh, they know they've done it. Now look at this. This is the Spanish rider Augusti Bal on his KTM, being shown through the uh, this special section here, and uh, you can see the conditions really rough. Now have a look at this. This is where the problems occur. He should have gone to his right, to our left, and the kids waved Marco through this section and the rider behind him, and this is what happened, look. And it's, I was so lucky that our cameras are there because this is what the riders have been complaining about. And the kids are waving through the Polish riders that go through the right way, and then waving the foreign riders to go through the wrong way. And this created so much controversy. Look at this going on here. They're really getting in the way and creating uh, huge problems. That uh, was Viktor Ivanski there on his Moto TM. And this is Marco Francescetti, the Italian, on his Suzuki. So the problem was that a lot of the riders got together when they got back to the bike park and they said, come on, guys, this is so unfair. It really isn't world championship stuff. A lot of the kids really were just there having good fun and waving on and acting as good spectators. But when you got back to uh, the bike camp, there was a terrible atmosphere and the riders all went on strike and they said, we are not going to ride the second day. Anyway, more about this later. Let's have a look at, uh, this is Orishuk, as you can see, just demonstrating what the riders have to do. They have their maintenance teams there, but they have to perform all the maintenance themselves. And, uh, like, they can change the tires, but they mustn't change the wheels, so they actually have to change the tires on the wheels. And there's always someone there to check and make sure that it's been done properly. So here are all the bikes, well over 200 bikes, all parked up. And then a lot of controversy going on, and the judges uh, having a lot of problems. Mario Tremaggia, who is one of the organizers, um, has got a lot to say about the drivers or the riders' strike. signed by 40 or 45 drivers that during the, the cross-country test uh, they were uh, attacked by some unknown spectator and uh, put in serious damage. 
and uh, some of them uh, had to stop or, or they fall. In any case, the result of this uh, two uh, ex uh, cross country test was uh, changed. Mm -hmm. And so we, we couldn't accept the result. So there we are, and that's the problem. And will, will this mean that it's going to? Will this mean that it's going to count as a world championship event? Here is the local rider. Yes, of course, because uh, today riders say they don't. The, the driver knows because I spoke uh, immediately with them uh, and uh, I communicated yesterday evening that today is a normal day because the police guarantee the uh, uh, safety. So they have to start if somebody doesn't start uh, and and don't don't produce some uh, some reasonable uh, uh, document uh, no, to not to start i will send uh, the list of the no start driver to the fim for the for the eventually providing but there was a a lot of consternation a lot of problems we saw the young polish rider taking his uh, bike out ready to start because he wants to be use the, this as a qualifying event for the world championships this young swedish rider is actually starting his motorcycle up in the bike park and that means he gets instant disqualification and that's his way of demonstrating that he doesn't want to be involved in this event anymore and some of the other riders cheer him on and he leaves the bike park so now the big question is, are they going to include these results in the World Championship standings? Yimink is so annoyed, he says, it's crazy, why shouldn't they? And I really think they should, and he's very dissatisfied all round. And Paul Edmondson has got some stuff to say about it too. This is the third year, and we've experienced this problem every year. And next year they also want a World Championship here. So, you know, if we don't do something now, then they're just going to keep having a world championship here because it's good for the financial side for Poland and Kelch. And if we don't do something now, then we're never going to do something. So all we can do is give you the unofficial result after one day. Paul Edmondson there, you'll see, ended up unofficially in ninth position in the 125cc, so he's not on the board there. Uh, really is a bit of a sham we're showing you these positions but uh, it'll be for the international jury to decide whether it goes through we take a break 